glory appears, my joy will be full. Lord, when your glory appears, my joy will be full. Do you really believe in the resurrection of the dead? And if so, what does this mean to you? One might think this an odd question for a pastor of a Catholic parish to ask his parishioners, his fellow Catholics, but it has been my pastoral experience over many years now that there is a great deal of confusion surrounding this matter. Note I did not ask you, do you believe in the immortality of the soul or soul survival after death? I have met very few people who don't. But I have also encountered many a Catholic who believes little more than this. This sometimes comes out during funeral preps and at other times. This, in truth, is a tragedy and, at the very best, a profound failure in catechesis. Certainly our Catholic faith embraces and includes the truth that the human soul is immortal, but while affirming this, it embraces far, far more. For instance, from the Catechism we learn, the Church teaches that every spiritual soul is created immediately by God. It is not produced by the parents, and also that it is immortal. It does not perish when it separates from the body at death. So far we have the affirmation of the, of the soul's divine origin and its immortality, but it doesn't stop there. The Catechism goes on to say, and it, that is, one's immortal soul, will be reunited with the body at the resurrection. So along with the immortality of the soul, the Church teaches the truth of the physical resurrection of our bodies. Have you, as a parent, ever asked yourself regarding one of your children at a particular time after a certain behavior or a comment, where did this child come from? Certainly you have if you're a parent. The answer is, of course, with respect to his or her physical characteristics. They come from you and your spouse's DNA. But with regard to his or her immortal soul, they are a direct creation of Almighty God. And as with each of us, he or she would not be fully human fully him or herself without his or her physical body. And it is in this whole self, body and soul, that according to our Catholic faith will be resurrected. This, in some rudimentary form, was the hope that gave courage to the martyrs of our Old Testament lesson, one of whom, the last of which, professed to those who would torture and kill him it is my choice to die at the hands of men with the God-given hope of being restored to life by him. But for you, speaking of those wicked men that so ill-treated his mother, his brothers, and him, there will be no resurrection to life. Concerning this matter, particularly of the resurrection of the body, there were skeptics in Jesus' day, just as there are in our own. In this case, as our gospel points out, the Sadducees. But the Sadducees, Sadducees were religious leaders. They weren't just anybody. Furthermore, they had charge of the whole temple system in Jerusalem at the time. They had much authority with the people in that regard. But they repudiated the resurrection of the body. They thought it was silly. And that's why they pose what they think to be an irreconcilable problem to our Lord and Savior 
in the example from the law of Moses. But Jesus corrects their error, saying in today's gospel, those who are considered worthy to attain to that age and the resurrection of the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage, for neither can they be die anymore, for they are sons of God, being sons of the resurrection. Therefore, we as Catholics, in accordance with Jesus' clear teaching, profess in the creed, I believe in the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting, or some form thereof. So let's continue our catechesis this morning on this vital subject, for there is much more to be learned and we can at least touch on a few key points. Under a subsection entitled Christ's Resurrection and Ours, the Catechism raises the question, how do the dead rise? When it then answers sections 997 through 101 by answering a series of subordinate questions the first of which is, what is rising? In answer to which the Catechism states, in death, the separation of the soul from the body, that's what death is, the human body decays and the soul goes to meet God while awaiting its reunion with its glorified body. God in his almighty power will definitively grant incorruptible life to our bodies by reuniting them with our souls through the power of Jesus' resurrection. That is what rising truly is, not just mere soul survival. The Catechism then poses the question, who will rise? To which in turn it answers, all the dead will rise. That is every man, every woman, every child who has died shall rise. Those who have done good to the resurrection of life, like those who were martyred in today's first lesson, and those who have done evil, like the ones who slew them and tortured them to the resurrection of judgment. So then, not only the just, but also the wicked will rise. Then the question is put, how? How does this take place? In an answer we learn, Christ is raised with his own body. See my hands and my feet, that it is I myself, as he says to his apostles on the Sunday of the resurrection. Then the catechism goes on, but he did not return to an earthly life. No, he ascended to the right hand of the Father. So in him, all of them will rise again, that is everybody, with their own bodies, which they now bear. But Christ will change our lowly, corruptible body to be like his glorious, incorruptible body into a spiritual body. So all without exception will be raised by the omnipotent power of Almighty God in and through the person of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And finally, it is asked, when will this occur? And the answer is given definitively at the last day, at the end of the world. Indeed, the resurrection of the dead is closely associated with Christ's second coming, his parousia. As St. Paul teaches, for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with the cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. So then, according to what God has revealed and confirmed to us by the magisterial authority of his church, on the last day at the end of this age, which is the final age, of this passing world's history, the one we're in right now. God the Father, in his almighty power, will give incorruptible life to our physical bodies, reuniting them to our immortal souls, so that we, through Christ his Son, by the power of the Holy Spirit, will then have a glorious, luminous, spiritual, yet physical body. 
like his was and is after he rose from the dead. Victorious over sin, victorious over Satan, victorious over disease of every kind, and victorious over the grave. And in this glorious, luminous, physical, spiritualized body, we will inhabit a new heavens and a new earth. Those of us that are part of the resurrection of the just, that is. That is the Catholic faith. This is why, my brothers and sisters, we as Catholics have always honored the body and burial. This is why the remains of the departed must be interred. The act of placing the remains into the ground or a tomb or a proper place. Our Catholic faith has always taught that those remains are a sacred trust, regardless of whether the, the result of a tragic accident or a terrible disease, to be treated and kept in anticipation of the resurrection of the just on the last day. If we truly understand our Catholic faith, we don't therefore scatter the remains of our dead to the four winds. That is a pagan practice which the church forbids. So then, what about cremation? Is it permitted by the church? In section 2301, the catechism goes on to teach, the church permits creation provided that it does not demonstrate a denial of faith in the resurrection of the body, like with the Neptune society, or like in some places of the world, some places in India. In other words, in some places and under certain circumstances, the answer is yes, and in some places and under some certain circumstances, the answer is an emphatic no. In the United States of America, the answer is yes, if it's done properly in the right spirit. This is why we here at St. Elizabeth Van Seton now have a columbarium soon to be dedicated on the east side of the church where the cremated remains of the faithful, our loved ones, can be interred for those who have chosen cremation, kept on holy ground, awaiting the day of the resurrection. And all of this going to this great expense, whether we bury our dead or we inter them and their cremated remains in a columbarium or some other way of interring them, we do this because of the revealed truth of the bodily resurrection. Therefore, this article of the creed, this article of the faith, that the soul is to be reunited with a spiritualized physical body, is not one possible belief among many in the marketplace of ideas, not for a Catholic, because it is de fide. And this means that it is of the essence of the Catholic faith revealed by God and subsequently confirmed by his teaching church. And therefore, once understood, once sufficiently grasped, necessary for one's salvation. Again, the Catechism teaches us in section 991, belief in the resurrection of the dead has been an essential element of the Christian faith from its beginnings. And then there's a quote from Tertullian, one of the church fathers. The confidence of Christians is the resurrection of the dead. Believing this, we live. And then they quote the Apostle Paul. How can some of you say, therefore, that there is no resurrection of the dead, by which he means physical resurrection? He goes on to say, if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. If Christ has not been raised, then my preaching is in vain and your faith is in vain. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead. The first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. 
When we profess that we believe in the resurrection from the dead, this is what it really means. This is what we should intend. And at this holy sacrifice of the Mass, we receive that very spiritual food, which is the seed of immortality, both of our souls and of our bodies. For we receive Jesus, our risen Lord, body and blood, soul and divinity, who said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, even though he die, yet shall he live. And we do so surrounded, though invisible to us presently, by angels and archangels and, yes, saints and the whole company of heaven. And this we do in just a few moments, having solemnly professed that we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Lord, when your glory appears, my joy will be full. Lord, when your glory appears, my joy will be full. Hear, O Lord, a just suit, attend to my outcry, hearken to my prayer from lips without deceit. Lord, when your glory appears, my joy